Los Angeles International Airport, often referred to as LAX, is one of the world's busiest and most iconic airports. It's an origin and destination for tens of millions of people annually, the crew base for thousands of pilots and flight attendants, a global juggernaut for cargo operations, and the gateway to one of the most prominent cities in the world. This video is an in-depth analysis of LAX and what it's like to be a pilot at this mega airport. Since opening in 1928, Los Angeles International has seen plenty of expansion since then, from the construction of the Tom Bradley International Terminal in 1984 to the installation of the iconic light towers on World Way in 2000. LAX is seemingly constantly under major construction. The current largest project on the passenger side of the operation is an automated people mover designed to shuttle passengers between rental cars, off-site drop-off locations, and the greater LA metro system. Perhaps the most distinct statistic that LAX boasts is the title of being the world's most prolific origin and destination airport. According to Los Angeles World Airports, the airport's operating firm, the facility sees more passengers originating for their trips than any other terminal. Simultaneously, the airport is the final destination for most passengers anywhere globally. While other mega airports like Dubai, Atlanta and London have larger passenger numbers due to transits and connections, no other airport is the destination in the way that LAX is. This is a testament to the tourist industry in the region and a reminder of just how populated the metro area is. Countless global airlines fly to LAX. On the domestic side, US airlines see value in making the airport a crew domicile since nearly every company maintains an LAX base. Remarkably, all big three airlines, American, Delta and United, have bases here. Southwest Airlines, the largest domestic operator in the country, likewise maintains a base here. You might think the major airlines would absorb most of the market, but JetBlue, Spirit, Allegiant, Alaska and SkyWest all have crew bases specifically at LAX. Most airports, even large ones, have enough traffic and demand to support no more than two or three major airline crew domiciles. The fact that LAX houses nine passenger airlines crew operations proves that the airport is in a league of its own. With so many airlines as well as residents' dependence on cars comes the need for lots of employee parking. Multiple car parks are scattered around the periphery of the airport's grounds and shuttles run between them and all nine terminals. Airside, LAX is one of the few airports to feature four parallel runways. Daytime operations are very straightforward for pilots. You depart from runways 25 right or 24 left, the inboards, and land on the outboards 25 left or 24 right. This pattern occurs nearly every day of the year from 6 a.m. until midnight, since the wind almost always blows off the ocean from west to east. The airport commences its quiet overwater operations at around midnight so long as the prevailing winds allow, which they usually do. This means that planes depart from the south complex to the west while arrivals land eastbound on the north complex, or vice versa. It's pretty cool to see a plane flying past you in the opposite direction on its initial climb while you're descending through 1,000 feet just before landing. It's very unusual for big airports to entertain this kind of operational anomaly, but there's enough spacing between the runways at LAX to make it work. When it comes to waypoint nomenclature, LAX's arrivals, departures and approaches have some memorable waypoint names. For commercial airline pilot and simple flying contributor Jack Hurstam, Hollywood One Arnav arrival was the first of many procedures with cool waypoint names he has discussed in simple flying articles. It features iconic Hollywood names like Clint Eastwood, Marilyn Monroe, Bette Midler, Steve McQueen, Charlie Chaplin, and more. Most eastbound arrivals are instructed to descend via the Hollywood One. This arrival is built to connect directly to approaches for all four eastbound runways at LAX. As mentioned, 24 right and 25 left are the predominant landing runways. For the last few years, the final approach fix for 24 right has been called Kobe and 25 left has been named Gigi.
these are tributes to the late basketball star Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna, who died in early 2020 in a helicopter crash. Bryant played for the Los Angeles Lakers for all 20 years of his career. Departing LAX to the east most likely means that the pilot's clearance will contain the Orca 5 or Ocean 1 RNAV departure. The first waypoints off the departure runways are usually Delray and Docker, homages to some of the coastal areas just off the airport, Marina Del Rey and Dockweiler Beach. Flying these departures on a clear day guarantees a fantastic view of the LA area, some of the best anywhere, and they're also easily visible from the passenger windows. Flying under instrument flight rules in the US always requires an approach clearance, whether for a visual approach on a nice day or an instrument approach if visibility is lower than VFR. Approach clearances are issued by approach controllers who oversee planes within an airport's terminal area. It's typical to receive an approach clearance about 10 to 20 miles away from the landing airport, but LAX terminal radar controllers tend to give approach clearances much further away than this. It's common to be cleared for an approach while still 50 or more miles from LAX, often somewhere just east of the Ontario airport. The approaches to all the westerly runways at LAX have common transition waypoints at the end of the arrival procedures that funnel traffic in from the east. This is what allows approach controllers to issue two clearances at once. This makes it easy for pilots since they know what their runway assignment will be from a long way out, and it also allows them to use the flight management computer to manage their descent path to the runway from a much longer distance away than is possible at other airports. The only difficulty arises when the controllers request unpublished speeds, which often happens since they are sequencing heavy and super arrivals from various directions to a common runway with other traffic. Pilots control speed while adjusting their descent profile to meet spacing requirements for wake turbulence when this happens. Due to its location, it's common for LAX to experience localized coastal weather patterns that diverge significantly from most of the rest of the LA metropolitan area. Specifically, LAX is very susceptible to fog that rolls in around sunset and stays over the airport until a few hours after sunrise. This is most prominent from May through mid-July. Angelinos are familiar with May Grey and June Gloom, which refer to the low clouds that persist for the first few miles inland from the coast during these months. Ultimately, LAX is an iconic airport and many pilots, including Jack, are happy to call it their home base. Easily identifiable by the architecture of the Tom Bradley Concourse, the light towers on World Way, its expansive nine-terminal layout and the countless airlines that serve the airport, LAX is an airport in a league of its own. Getting to the airport can be challenging, but engineers are constructing better, more efficient ways for passengers and staff to access the airport across the LA area. What do you think of flying in and out of LAX? How have your experiences been? Let us know by leaving a comment. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.